welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring! You've got such a radio voice. Jesse, you really Je- he's, really he's, he's getting really the like voiceover, it. and I think it's he's got the right... Thank you, guys. It sounds a lot. You know, nice. let's, let's be honest. You walk into a bar, you're like, what's this hot mess coming? <laughs> then, <laughs> then, the, the hot mess, then, then, then the hot mess his mouth. opens, and these, these dulcet <laughs> chords give way to this radio-friendly voice. You're like, oh, Hello, uh, I'm uh, the hot mess you ordered. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, I'll, I'll have three, please. <laughs> yeah, Jesse is actually getting into trying to do voiceover um, professionally. I think you, I think you got a good trailer voice as well. Thank you. Oh, radio sure. ads, like regional oh, sure. regional landscaping companies on the radio. I can imagine you. I've do. done one radio ad. Have you paid? Yeah, yeah. It was in the states, and they barely wanted to pay me, <laughs> and 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 they, they used music in the background that I I listened to. I'm like, there's something different about this. Like, oh, you can hear the. Um, What's it called? The watermark, the audio watermark in the background. They didn't pay for the, the music. They just stole it. Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right? So I'm like, oh wow, and they paid oh, me like oh, a whopping fifty dollars yeah. to do the whole radio. Imagine ad. that from a company that's clearly cutting corners. <laughs> already, right? but, but maybe it'll matter when it comes to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm officially recording, so we are in the episode. But oh great, no, right, Je- right. Jess, Jess is eating a donut. He hasn't got his headphones on. He's waiting for a coffee. Hold on, here on. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna donut, introduce donut ASMR. Here no, we go. here we go. Mm. It's very disappointing. It's, don't actually. It's the yeah, future. Mm. We had a we had a review from somebody saying that they like the show. They just couldn't deal with the ASMR of Jesse constantly eating and drinking into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, well, well, listener, if you're out there, that's the hot mess factor that you just have to take if you want to hear that gorgeous voice. Turn, uh, just give me a test as well. Jesse's yeah. voice goes all over the place. Testicles, testicles. Perfect, One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I'm pretty monotone, so I'm usually somewhere in the middle. That's good. Oh, well, good for you. I'm overly animated. So, <laughs> which I'm sure, weirdly enough, has probably never helped in my career. But uh, St- nobody, nobody likes some of the energy on stage. People can take it. If they, yeah, take it or leave it. Whenever I go low energy, I'm like, oh, it's, it's, it is. Uh, well, because I used to lean into the being the stoner yeah, guy. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier in my career, I was very much the stoner comic. And then I realized, oh, if I'm actually stoned when I'm on stage, I am less funny. Yeah. I am less like. You got to have the energy oh, on a yeah. scale of Jack D to um, I don't know uh, uh, Lee Evans. Where would you be on that scale? Oh, well, those, very... are, those are both high energy yeah. guys. So I think I'm under. I actually, you gave me a good scale there because I get to go. I'm negative two on a scale of Jack. You might minus so like, Jack D by two. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you got to go with somebody more like Norm Macdonald yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to Lee Evans. I'm a I'm a plus ten to Norm Macdonald's uh, laid back observational style <laughs> but i will never be but i tell you what lee evans does inspire you sometimes with like his uh shotgun routine or whatever that is the machine gun routine yeah, where yeah, he turns yeah. the mic stand into a machine gun and rattles uh, shoots everybody down like that was that's a kind of hyper energy routine that you do see when you're a young comic and you go i need yeah some sort of physical thing like that and i, I did have it for it i had a routine where i was using the mic stand as a broom yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would I would get out my broom and be sweeping <laughs> off some trash. I don't remember the full routine now, but but that's all inspired by the magic of Lee Evans when you see him just use and use I, things and invent things out of nowhere on the stage. And like he was like one of those comedians. I remember watching him as a kid, and like um, he's one of the. I don't remember watching that much stand up comedy as a kid, but that's the one stand up comic I remember from like the nineties. Yeah, as being like a real breakthrough kind of actor, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it both reminded me, and and drenching himself in sweat. I know, That's, sweat, sweat into it's a three piece remarkable. suit. Remarkable, <laughs> because <laughs> if, because any other comic, I mean, we're not talking flop sweat here. We're just talking hustle sweat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that kind of hustle sweat. If it starts to hit you in a hot environment, you're like, this just doesn't, <laughs> this is, is is making me less funny. People are, the Edinburgh Festival is notoriously hot. All those rooms are hot yeah. and sweaty. And if you have an excessively hot and sweaty night, like I, I did actually last Edinburgh Festival, I did in 2019, I had to change a shirt halfway through the show. And it wasn't fun for the, I tried to make it fun and I tried to go, look, I have to change clothes right now i'm this shirt is weighing me down it's dripping on the floor you're all looking at me hustling and 
sweat in here and that wasn't adding to the humor <laughs> it wasn't put, it wasn't going but it's fun we can tell you're working your ass off and that wasn't the tone as i went off stage and changed my shirt the, the tone seemed to be oh god we're all hot too why yeah, don't yeah, we yeah. just go outside let's get some fresh air <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a t- it's a tough one to juggle here's jesse with coffee and another donut um uh, and go. Uh, so I, we should probably do an introduction. Is this is uh, this is JJ Whitehead? Awesome. Hello. Bits. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the little bits. Uh, we had little bits in the coffee. Great. Come to That's come what... to Halifax. Get little bits in your coffee. <laughs> um, I didn't think it would be so hot out today, and so I'm sweating. I apologize sweating. in advance if I uh, have a wonderful man stank to me. Can you also shut the door? <laughs> Thank you. But I was just introduced to JJ, international Canadian export. Hello, of supreme comedy. Uh, Supreme. Supreme comedy. Better get your hopes up. (laughs) That's how we we describe it. (laughs) So, uh, thanks for coming on the show, JJ. Thanks for having me. I really enjoy... It's been a fun trip back to my homeland, and I'm happy to see that you guys have become a part of the tapestry. So, uh, JJ, in in 30 seconds or less, uh, let's say that you're at a party full of people that you've never met you're um, completely coked out, and, and someone's like, "Hey, man, what do you do? What's uh, tell me about you?" So you've got thirty seconds to um, bewilder our audience. I'm a who- comic. Are you holding? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a, I guess I, I'm a stand-up comic. I'm from Nova Scotia, and my career mainly started in Britain, and now I'm based out of Los Angeles. That. Yeah, yeah. Some things up, and I've traveled, traveled the world. Get another twenty-five. Keep okay, going. well, I've traveled the world for about twenty years doing jokes, doing jokes. Uh, you name it, in any market around the world. And uh, in the last five years, though, everything's changed for me, and I now live in Los Angeles, and I write a bit of TV. Yeah, so J- JJ, you're Cole Harbor, you're from originally. I right? am originally from Cole Harbor. There's that big sign that says. Sydney Crosby. <laughs> I am. I am. You from, need to sign next to it. I or? am very from very close to that sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am from walking walking distance of the of uh, this is Sydney Crosby's land. So, like, what you, you? My understanding is you moved to, to the UK and you didn't go into the UK to get into comedy. You got into com. The UK made you get into comedy. Is that, yeah, is that right. how well, it works well, in the UK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. In, in Britain, you just get forced indoors frequently, and you're like, how are we going to entertain ourselves? In a way, it should be what happens here in Nova Scotia, but we found other ways to entertain ourselves. But uh, yeah, I moved to the UK <laughs> shortly after graduating from Dalhousie here in Halifax uh, with, a, with a health professions degree. Uh, but I wanted... Uh, a what, sorry? You know, health, you know, the health professions? <clears throat> I mean, like the, doctoring, nursing, all that stuff. Kinesiology, most. Mostly kinesiology. You're a kinesiologist? Well, I would say my brother is a kinesiologist because he actually did what the degree said. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to work. uh, It was more administrative, like rec administration. You wanted to be an an administrator in the office of a kinesiologist. You wanted to work for your brother. I I wanted to work. I very much wanted to work for my (laughs) my brother who works here at the QE2. Uh, Good uh, word up to the first responders. We're up for the support system. My brother works in the healthcare here. Basically, (laughs) very end of my degree at Dell, I uh, was working in South Carolina. I went and worked uh, for Hilton Head. You were well-traveled, sir. I I was in Hilton Head. Yeah, even before I became a comedian, I was just trying to find a way to travel. I'm a military kid, so my father is in the Canadian. You Air have Force, a, a rich and so lustrous background. That's well-traveled <laughs> kid, very in the pre-Facebook days. I had a lot of trouble keeping friends, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of temporary relationships. Do you have in a my lot of pen pals. Well, I, you know what? You'd be amazed at how many military kids become comedians because you you end up drinking with comics around the world mm. uh, after shows and stuff. And a lot of them go, "Yeah, I was I was raised in military as well, and we, wow. moved, we moved around a lot as a kid." Uh, so I think it's a bit of a defense mechanism that you start right. to uh, develop when you're a kid because you're always the new kid in town and you're always getting picked you're always asked for the f- you're the first fight every new school i was the f- the, the school the new kid or so you had to learn to make them know. laugh real quick yeah, yeah. So or you, else they punched you in the face did you say like, math no laugh you had to make oh. them laugh real quick yeah yeah you had to be able or, to laugh everything math. off you had to learn, yeah, had to learn yeah, math yeah. real quick because i don't know how that real? makes sense at yeah. all but like <laughs> let's go down that road yeah. <laughs> i'm yeah. the new kid at school i get picked on a lot i had to learn math right away <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to clarify too. I'm also really good at math, uh, but, but but yes, you had to learn to make them laugh, maybe loosen them up, and uh, that was the only way to try to fit in every, everywhere you moved as a kid. So 
that is uh, something like that I've noticed. Every, I could name tons of comedians that I've met who are like, oh, yeah, I was raised in the military, too. We moved around a lot. So that was the start of my childhood. Every three years, we'd be posted. Either my father was the my father was the commanding officer here at Shearwater for 9-11, during 9-11, wow. when all those planes were redirected. That was my dad's job here. But we were also posted out in Victoria on the on the West Coast and, uh, and then going on to live around the world. So when I graduated Dow, I worked... I was working in Hilton Head Island. I worked for Marriott Hotels. That was the way what I ended do? my degree. So that was my dissertation. You were a kinesiologist at a I hotel? I ran their activities. So I was doing, <laughs> I was doing, yeah, I was doing uh, like dolphin trips and golf tournaments and all that kind of stuff. Let's dive and, into uh, that for a second. Yeah, I'll, do you all, I'll, I'll tell you all about the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, how, yeah. how to do a dolphin trip. What the hell is a dolphin trip? Well, there's 22 dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> at my time of uh, finishing my degree down there, yeah, we had 22 two dolphins <laughs> and Elena, i knew them all by name and, and personality and i would take the tourists out in the boat like the tourists that were staying at the marriott hotel of course this is uh, where so hilton head island in south carolina oh wow that's where i finished my degree which is weird i recommend this to any students here in how like being from nova scotia i couldn't wait to find a way to see the rest of the world mm. which is where my graduating class at dell was there's probably i think there was 52 of us or something but only five of us chose to leave canada for mm. for our final semester for our final like, i would have jumped on that yeah yeah crushed it so I, yeah i i couldn't wait so i got to go to hilton head on and do it all but even then i found it wasn't for me because <laughs> it was very short hair clean cut uh yeah, wearing... you've got a very you've got a, a hairstyle very similar to mine yeah, I find. yeah more yeah. reckless and nobody's telling me what to do <laughs> <laughs> well that's a lot of you my decisions to, those measure in your hair every morning that's yeah. who you remind me of dax shepherd ah dax i you know what i get his con- i've never met him but i love him i yeah good his guy. podcast is hilarious would, and wonderful yeah. yeah so yeah i'll take that there's, <laughs> okay, the, other, yeah. there's the other guy too the uh who played uh shaggy and scooby-doo uh Oh my God, uh, Willard! Um, yeah, Matthew Lillard. Matthew, L- Matthew Lillard, not not Willard. Yeah, <laughs> Willard Scott, adore him. But yeah, but yeah, but not Yeah, yeah, I get the Matthew Lillard. He was the perfect Shaggy. He was he was the amazing. perfect Shaggy. Yeah, yeah. If the, he was the perfect Shaggy, is a great quote. <laughs> Yeah. That is Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that you got his, uh, when he dies, you're, you're ready. You're yeah. right. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> well, at the Oscars where they fade through all the people they lost that year. <laughs> <laughs> that perfect. Oh, I'd be terrible if that was the photo. I know, exactly. Oh, poor Matthew. Matthew, I love you, dude. But uh, yeah, we're, yeah, can you imagine? His, that's the shot. Him with Scooby. <laughs> CGI Scooby, dude. <laughs> I hope you live a long life, Matthew. And I know you've had a great career, but... If I who knows how the generations will change, but if that's what they want, oh wasn't he also God. in Hackers? Was he in Hackers? Yeah, he was. I think. God, that's a yes. Yeah, I believe so. And yeah. Scream. And Scream. Scream. Yeah, 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 Scream yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, wow. I'm, yeah, You're very old good. Film. So I have, got, I have, I have got that comparison before. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's basically the deal. I was running activities down in um, South Carolina for um, Marriott Hotels. That was the end of my degree with Dal. And uh, and after that, I returned here. I I did uh, bartend here for a while in Halifax before. Uh, it was called the it, so it had two iterations, but it was called the Market Street Jazz Cafe. Oh, wow. It was just below the Metro Center, and then it was called the Velvet Olive for wow. a while. Oh, I remember the Velvet Olive. There we go. So yeah. I think I remember the Velvet Olive. I can't look yeah. up whether, yeah. whether it was classy or, or whether and it was. And we had stand-up comedy in there. Yeah, yeah. It was classy. Uh, you know, we had lots of... There was in like, the, uh, in this weird sort of like back street. And, yes. Like around, yeah. the stru- around the corner from Reflections, I think. And like the... It was like there was nothing but construction on the other side of the street. It was nothing but a parking lot, like in behind it. So that's it. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, and yeah, but lots of independent, like metalworking artists did the interior and mm-hmm. stuff, and the chairs and it was very cool. It was yeah, it was really cool. Uh, Brad Denton, uh, who I think lives in Toronto, he was the artist that kind of designed the bar and everything. This is going way back, but it, that was my first. I was going to well, say, like, I asked you to introduce yourself in thirty seconds. He did it in five. I said, yeah. you got another twenty-five, and you've been going for ten minutes now, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> well, well, let's, let's be honest. I wasn't when I'm. Talking about Matthew Lillard for a minute, that's not really... I, I, I don't think, think he's part of your story. Yeah, I think the me <laughs> intro, I do feel the me intro was done about 15 minutes ago. So. When, I, when I just talking about your life, yeah. it's good. It's, uh, yeah, geez, don't set me up like that, man. Like, so, oh, then, he, uh, then he ranted and ranted. You would never believe what this guy did. He came 
came, he came to have a chat with us, and you know what he did? He fucking talked to us the whole time. Holy shit. The balls on that kid. Yeah, I'm so glad somebody said it. Jesse, you, I didn't want to say it. But you, you took the headphones off and immediately forgot we were doing a podcast. <laughs> That's what happens. That's, That's right. why well, we are, headphones. We were just having lunch together. I know. This is a continuation of lunch. I tried to tell you. I told you guys. We should have started hours ago. I know. I just <laughs> shut the this weird affili- uh, affliction where people don't know that I'm being sarcastic and I'm dead serious by the way like it's been the past 10 years or so I'll be very sarcastic about something and people will just be turned dead serious like really Jesse it's what do you mean like cadavers what yeah. like, it's the voice man there's, it's too, the voice. there's too much sincerity in your voice you're gonna have to learn like a sarcastic gear or something because yeah, yeah. like, you, you can't deliver and keep delivering your sarcasm <laughs> like as, as if you're like some Englishman who's like just straight forward because because British people can do it because when British people are sarcastic there's something in the tone that you're like oh I get it but if you don't change your tone at all yeah dude I think you're being serious so you're gonna have to learn a little a little Little high thing? <laughs> oh, you just like widen your eyes or something. <laughs> just anything. I don't know if that would go over very well. I don't really like you. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. That worked. That worked. I caught your eyebrows and uh, there you go. That totally, that totally worked for me. Uh, I am sweating today. like a like a pig, man. I am so sorry in advance for the the smells that are going to be just wafting into your nose cavity soon enough. Uh, enjoy that. The both. Of you. I thought you were talking to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think you understand that this is, works. Smell, smell that is some it, yeah. powerful sweat that it's it, coming right? through. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a <laughs> nobody day, nobody yeah. smell your computers right now. This, no, no, is, no, this is how you make a really good podcasting <laughs> studio is it's completely soundproof and airtight. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's phase two we're gonna do next year, I think. So uh, it'd be fine in the winter. Uh, so when, when you got to the UK and you got into comedy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, the, so, so that's how, how, oh, yeah, how did you end up doing oh, yeah, that? If yeah. I can, yeah. Uh, basically, so the reason why we mentioned that Halifax bar, that was my last mm. job here in Halifax. The they did have though. a comedy night. So I will say shout out to like the first Canadian comedians who I ever got to see because they worked on this hour is 22 minutes and they would come down on like a Tuesday night and do the do this. Do, and it was Chris Finn, um, Tim Steves and Mark Farrell. All uh, great comedians and writers. They were my earliest intro. I even remember Chris Finn. I had him at the back bar, and I'm bartending. And, and the, so the back, so they would perform by the close to the upper bar, and um, I'm at the back. And I remember saying to Chris Finn uh, at one point because we're talking about comedy, and I went, "I'm not boring you, am I, Manny?" And he was like, "No, not at all." And then I went, "Cause I want to become a comedian someday too." And Chris Finn went, "Now you're boring me." Kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I've always taken that memory with me, and I love it. Death. And I told Tim Steves and Mark Farrell that story. I haven't seen Chris uh, Vincent, but I, but I. Uh, that's I t- very funny. I told I've told them about the story, and basically, yeah, I always wanted to be a comedian. I couldn't figure out the avenue because other than bartending at the back of the Velvet Olive uh, for that year, um, there wasn't a comedy club in Halifax. Then there wasn't a way forward. I can only see oh, Toronto. There was there. No, there wasn't. No. Um, I think the generation before me had one at the Misty Moon or something. Oh, the Misty Moon, right? My parents and now we've that. got yeah. yeah. Now we've got uh, Yuck Yucks here, and and I think a few other comedy yeah. nights pop up here and there, which is fantastic. And <clears throat> I uh, so I couldn't see an avenue. I wanted to eventually move to Toronto, but basically I went to Scotland first. As you do, just to, <laughs> well because if you're under 25, you can get a two year working visa for the uh, Commonwealth uh, country. See, I never did any stuff like that. That's yeah. Really Jesse apologize. used his passport to go to America, and that's it. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least you went somewhere. At least you went somewhere. <laughs> it was for uh, yeah. I was like honestly, like if you get just make a short film and get it into as many film festivals as you can because they will treat you like royalty, man. It's they don't pay for for airfare, but they'll put you up in a hotel hotel they'll get your personal driver they'll feed you like like they're like getting you ready for the slaughter right yeah. and it's it's and there's parties all the time and it's just for a little fucking weird short film like just trust man it's great it's a great vacation doing it like a film festival vacation but that's that's what i did that's was my the entirety <laughs> of my travels was in the states right in film festivals yeah. that's so that's kind of sad <laughs> well, great hey, way to see the world i don't know it's still, it's still more adventure than a lot of people yeah, get, yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess yeah. yeah but sorry scotland oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah so i 
I, I picked, I, so I got my Commonwealth thing. I hugely, I highly recommend that to young Canadians. If you want an adventure, if you didn't get one out of your college studies or, you know, in your gap year or whatever you want to call it, um, I got that one to go to the Commonwealth. I picked Edinburgh because my father being military, I asked my dad, I was like, where's the prettiest place you've been to? And my dad uh, spoke highly of Edinburgh. So nice. I moved to Edinburgh, Scotland. And then on my, se- and my game plan actually was to just have this gap summer. I was like six months in Britain. Then I'll be back. I'm going to go to Toronto and start stand up, com- uh, pretend to go to journalism school. You know, go to Ryerson. Uh, I was doing photojournalism. Nice. Um, so I was going to go to Ryerson. And, and but I wanted to be a comedian. I actually was just keeping it in the back of my mind. It's a really hard thing to say, especially if you're from the Maritimes. It's a really hard thing to say to people. I want to be a stand-up comedian. That's I not don't a... think that's a Maritime problem. I think that's an everywhere problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe it is. Well, I don't know. It's a very realistic job in, when you land in Britain. You can yeah, yeah, see yeah. that. You can, really? Oh, you know, yeah. British comedy is very... If strong you, if, if, if we just went to britain and i just i went to the pub well everyone's drinking at the pub so they probably no they be... no i think if you so if you're saying just saying it out loud yeah. i think if you said it in a british pub they would go well here's the path let's yeah, march yeah, yeah. down oh. let's march down to the comedy club let's see if you got the chops we'll no get you on stage they, they were... and we'll help you try to nurture a career in doing this yeah there's a very realistic path to doing that's it that's amazing they're, they're, that. yes, they're a stand-up yeah. comedian so i would say haven't broken through on tv or like I don't have their own radio shows and, and yeah. aren't on massive stages, but they just do um, medium, small size clubs and and tour a lot. They earn more than like a doctor. They, there's a real industry there. Wow. Even without really breaking yeah, through. You can, like, I honestly didn't know that. Yeah, That's you can amazing. Make as much as a GP as yeah, just working the circuit in oh, Britain. Shit. It's a realistic path. Uh, which is crazy. Well, why didn't I you mean, go it's gotten there? harder. We did. That's what he did. That's what we did. We're getting him through. Jesse's back, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think he left the room for a second. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I arrived in Scotland. <laughs> well, yeah. Scotland doesn't count. That's great. That's great. Have you been teaching him about geography or anything? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching him about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite dumb. It turns, it turns out you get a lot of preconceived notions of the way the world uh, is working. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what happened was um, so my overall game plan was that I was just on my gap year or whatever you want to call it when you've graduated university and you just want to go and find yourself. And I was at the hostel, second night at the hostel, and people from the hostel were going to a comedy club. Uh, this is comedy in Toronto. Club. It's yeah. called in... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that sarcasm? You didn't, <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> you didn't even move your eyebrows that yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, and um, at the end of that comedy night, on my second night, the, the uh, compare... The host, she did say, if you want to try this, let us know. I went back to the hostel that night. I didn't tell any of my new new friends at the hostel that I'm going to go do it, but I just went down on my own the next day, and I knocked on the door, and I went, I want to try to do this. And I enrolled in it, and, and uh, you know, that's one of the easier things, too. I didn't do it in front of anybody I knew. Right. Right. It was a yeah. secret thing. I, I tried wouldn't want to do, do it in front of anyone I do either. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird because yeah. I now know comics who do. I, yeah. I know there's a couple comics in LA who tell me stories of like my first gig, I packed it with my friends and family and all this. I'm like, wow, how could you do like, that? I, I that couldn't would do be that. Yeah. Devastating. That would scare the <laughs> shit out of me. It depends on how supportive your family is. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a... even so. Yeah, I felt like it's something I had to grow into. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But uh, but I was able to do it in front of strangers, and and then, and it went and it went, it went okay. <laughs> it went, <laughs> I went fine. So that's why hey, no, that's like that's kind of huge for the first time. Like, there's so many people who bomb right away, right off the bat. Yeah, right? I didn't so... bomb until my seventh. <laughs> gig so yeah but I've, the fact that you didn't right away is kind of really impressive you, you know like but i think yeah but i think that's british too of like you get a little bit of a leeway a little bit of uh, there's a little they people accept there's a little bit of nuance to the art form and i do right. think it, it's harder in in north america i think because the attitude uh go ahead comic, make me laugh nobody can you know? see <laughs> the end game of this unless you just want to pitch you're pitching to be an actor or something so oh right yeah there's Nobody becomes a comedian to become a comedian in North America. They become a comedian to be on television that is or frequently be in a movie. The case. Or, yeah, to yeah. add a string to their bow kind of right. thing. That is frequently the case. Whereas in Britain, you can go, oh, I'm going to be the, a comedian. And that's I'm gonna the job. do like, stand-up. Yeah, because oh, it's really quite neat. Because people really analyze it as an art form then. And like, the, like yeah. Edinburgh in particular is, you know, like it's 
amazing festival where you can have every different kind of comedy and yeah people are creating stuff you've never seen before but they they they, they kind of celebrate that as an art form and the yeah. whole month is about it really. yeah and there's a crazy thing about the attitude of edinburgh too where is um everybody's doing these solo shows and sharing this piece of their life and even if you're a weaker comedian who maybe can't fill an hour yet but you're doing one it's amazing how the audience grows up with you because yeah. they come to see you and they will will come to see you next year that you're at edinburgh because they can't wait to see it's like early twitch it's like early all these all these social media things now That's where people cool. want to be have a piece of your life and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. be more involved in you and that used to be very much in a live setting of like i can't wait to check in with this person whose life i've been kind of getting snippets of here and there right on the comedy <laughs> circuit and by coming to the edinburgh festival so and that's and being in edinburgh uh, so and i volunteered at the edinburgh festival too when i started doing stand-up comedy and i just got I just got fully involved, and so that's uh, yeah. So that was the that's very cool. And then man. I never came home, so I was interested when I told my. <laughs> so that was where yeah. After yeah. telling my parents, look, I'm just gonna go see Europe for like six months, travel around. I feel like when you told them that you you did air quotes with your hands, <laughs> yeah. you go see Europe. <laughs> what does that mean? What, what is, are you gonna uh, see Europe or not? Like, what is, <laughs> uh, yeah, my mom was very much. I mean, my mom still for 15 years in that I lived in in Britain was still. When are you coming home, Aww. mom? This is my. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I do it. I do this now. Yeah. Like, like your she's brother. Really, yeah, like, yeah, like just like your brother. Well, she's really happy that I moved to Los Angeles now because she thinks that I'm closer. And I try to explain her. I'm not. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is like Canadian moms. Canadian moms, please beware that that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we're closer, even though we seem like we're in Iceland or. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just actually, let her have the fantasy, man. Just like, <laughs> but I try to tell her, I was like, because living in Britain, I could be home for lunch. I can fly home and with the time yeah, difference. Yeah, like, if you get Heathrow to Halifax, it's like six hours. Yeah, and, and I then a four-hour time difference. Yeah. Boom. Exactly. So you leave at eight, oh, wow. you're home for for lunch. And Whereas it, L.A., yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I leave for L.A., I get home at like six in the morning the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to tell my mom that I'm actually technically further away. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> it's really it's, funny. When I moved from the U.K. to, Can to like Atlantic Canada, I was like, it's... I know people who would fly to Turkey for a week for a holiday, which is roughly five and a half, six hours from the yeah. U.K., but the idea that we were going to Canada, it was like this distant. It was like flying to New Zealand. They were right. like, "That's so far away." And I was yeah. like, "You just came out from Turkey. You didn't have, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, and it was fine. You went there for one week. <laughs> you went there for a long weekend. Like, yeah. it's like they it, can't. People can't do the math. No, no, no. The, yeah. It's crazy. And it's all foreign. Yeah, like my mom. It's just as long as there's not a body of water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's between us, then uh, she thinks I'm closer. <laughs> That's exactly. really funny. But there is, you are, the, the, we are close to the border to that country. So I guess if you just go, oh, it's just, if you think about it in terms of a country rather than yeah. the actual distance, I guess. What's that coming down the driveway, Reese? It's me with a fresh delivery from the ad man. Come oh my smell gosh. It. I will come smell it. I love how your ads smell. <laughs> oh, golly, it's oh, fresh. I'm going to stuff it in my face. <laughs> Ah, oh, fresh ads. Smack me in the face with it. Oh, oh, yeah, just the way I like it. Ads. I, yeah. I, I want to interrupt for a second. I'm curious. It just dawned on me, Reese. Do you have a topic for today? <laughs> I was going. I, I did have oh, a topic. Do we do topics on the show? I, I, did, <laughs> I, did I have thought a, Matthew Lillard was the. Uh... <laughs> Initially, I did have a topic, but then, then uh, I I wanted to talk about the writing process for the Jim Jeffries show because mm. because um, uh, I'll go into why, but but um, like so so when JJ was uh, was writing the Jim Jeffries show. Should uh, put that right up to the mic. Our audience loves it. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 so sorry that I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, there we go. We'll let him enjoy that. Yes. Ah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 if, if the audience hasn't uh, watched any episodes, uh, take a look on YouTube because there's tons of uh, clips and moments from the show that are on there. And, uh, yeah, we make every, yeah, this contemporary TV. Exactly. Like, everything's designed, especially in shows like a political comedy show, everything's designed to have a little four minute clip on the, Can this go into a clip exactly. on YouTube? Mm. And, and you were writing a political comedy show uh, like uh, a nightly show 
and it was during one of the weirdest political times ever in his yeah. lifetime. And also, uh, well, Jim, I, Jim Jeffries is Australian, you're Canadian, and you yeah. were writing for like well, a primetime you, American yeah, show. You might be, you might be, yeah, that's right. And I, I was yeah, Canadian, and uh, and we had uh, Matt Kirshen, who's British, um, in our writers' room. And uh, but yeah, you know, our pilot was done two weeks before the election, and it was actually all geared towards Hillary winning. Oh wow! So we took it. We actually. Uh, so the pilot was done with Hillary winning, and then I mean, this was back in 2016. So this that was yeah. We, I mean, like, that was I, when we were pitching the show. Yeah, I've seen other shows who who did that. Like actually, New Girl was like, uh, which I'm going through right now. Had us had an episode about like you know all about Hillary and stuff like that. And I think oh yeah, everyone, well, look at everyone's Steve. expecting Hillary to win because yeah. not because Hillary was great, but because who the fuck yeah. would actually vote Trump? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, well, look, at how, look at how sad <laughs> Stephen Colbert was. So because I will say that so. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Colbert was one of the most shocked in the world because yeah, I don't yeah. know if you all remember because he did, did it live. I don't remember. And no. he got drunk. Uh, he got he got so sad and drunk. On Is that, a, seriously? He lost all his. Oh, you know, he was not ready for to be hit with that. I got kicked out of a party what? that night. So luckily, so I was, my well, friend, my friend. Did, like was my friend Ryan was so mad when it when it happened that he destroyed he broke his TV by throwing his remote that hard at his TV he had to yeah. buy a whole new TV but sorry not as yeah, good yeah. as getting kicked out of a pilot right yeah no that's <laughs> right. so, so Jim Jeffries pilot was done I wasn't part of the team did the pilot I joined them on episode one so I joined the writing staff but I had just this is I was just moving over from Britain I was just coming over for mm. opportunities making the final move I had been dipping into LA for a few years but still living in London uh, but coming over dipping in and i knew i had a shot to write on the show uh pilot very much geared towards hillary clinton winning so that was fine so there was immediate reshoots and stuff to, to the pilot <laughs> oh uh, but i arrived and i went to a party and this shows you how i wasn't into the american mindset yet because when trump started winning and all the red uh, states started getting announced i was laughing i'm at the because i was having so much fun with everybody and i guess in a way i kind of didn't realize oh yeah i live here now this greatly affects all the liberal right. minded people that i'm standing over and i'm just getting drunk and pointing <laughs> at the screen and laughing <laughs> i was i was kind of behaving like a kid who still lived in britain <laughs> <laughs> and then my buddy who was hosting the party had to go over and go, hey, Jay, uh, maybe you should go home because you're having a little too much fun here. And I was like, yeah, you guys are all treating it like it's awake or something. <laughs> and, like, and, then I, and on my walk home, after I got kicked out of the party, I went, oh, yeah, this is their country. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. I was, I was pointing and laughing and feeling like I can, I can live anywhere in the world. <laughs> this shit show that I'm coming here for. And, then, and, now, and now I have lived there for a few years, and I realized, oh, yeah, the consequences are, are uh, much graver than me. I because I guarantee you, I did not laugh at the last no, election. No, no, no. I, I want to go, to, oh, please, please, can we be done with this, <laughs> oh. this era of insanity? I guarantee uh, that you were like desensitized from Brexit like me. Because oh, you were in the UK totally. when that happened, you would be like, "Well, anything could happen now." So yeah, well, I was I was in the UK for the Scotland vote for the for the leaving uh, the refer uh, oh, yeah, the, the referendum. Yeah, I was yeah. there for that, which was crazy because that mm. was um that was a yes vote until I went to bed and I woke up and it had swung yeah, yeah, yeah. on. So so yes, I'm kind of but having lived in Britain for 15 years, I do did feel uh, closer to that decision. I'm just new to America, so I am new. I'm uh, and and I'm just I'm Canadian through and through, and so so I am still. There's a, still a little part of me that feels like I'm an outside observer, right. living amongst them. I, yeah. so, I think I would feel the I, same way if I yeah. moved to America, honestly. Yeah, yeah but know? I would never feel that way about Britain. I do have an emotional attachment yeah, yeah, yeah. to Britain. That actually, the Brexit decision actually did. I still do feel heavy hearted that's yeah, actually yeah. just from that, a psychological so. perspective why do you feel like that is why do you feel like a, an emotional connection to britain well, but not, having lived not there, the states having lived there for 15 years oh, and having had my <laughs> co- yeah and having had my okay. comedy career start there in, in 99 and right. stuff i very much and also for a, much of my career i really thought i was never going to leave britain i really thought this is it i'm a british based Canadian comedian and I love Britain very much. Right. Uh, so yeah. So I uh, yeah. Uh, so I feel close to decisions like that. Whereas America, I've never. America's <laughs> always been my novel country in the south of Canada that produced uh, some of my favorite comedians. But I didn't think of that American dream until, or I didn't rethink of that American dream until maybe five years ago when I moved there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I guess does that 
the outsider perspective is always really good for writers. So do you find that I that was a real so, tool yeah. for, for writing about po- the politics? Yes. When I, you kind of parachuted in, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's part of the science behind the success that I had in Britain, too, was that I got to be this outside yeah. guy commenting to the British. And the British love being uh, laid into as well. You know, like somebody British, from, from, like, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, and the using... You can be self-deprecating to British to British people as long as you're. I try. Sorry, I, well, sorry, or, sorry. You can be. You can not make, self-deprecating. Straight up deprecating. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah. You can, but you can make fun of the British as long as you make fun of yourself as well. Oh, is that? Oh and shit! I've been doing wrong the rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that doesn't sorry, work with Reese. Americans. <laughs> it actually doesn't. It works a lot less with Americans. I think Americans, that's also that's a very Canadian uh, thing as well. Like I think it is too. I think yeah. Canadians love to go. Oh, you're shit like us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yes. something about our Commonwealth attitude yeah. that makes us go, like I will, I will love you as long as you suck like me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, like, I'm, yeah. I'm, absolutely, Whereas, absolutely. And, then, and then, uh, there is a difference in nuance when you go to America. Is like I will love you, but please don't tell me that I suck. Please build me up. Please do really? this, and I want to build you up. And let's all. There's a little bit. There's a lot more of that actually compared to oh, Britain. Wow. Oh yeah, Britons. Britain loves to hate themselves. I have they noticed that. They I have love noticed that. that. Yeah. Love to like, be told in that a really funny suck. way, though. It, it's yeah, dude, it's, everything's fucking shit. But what, yeah. you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. It's my life. And also, <laughs> and that's the great thing about, I think it teaches a lot about comedy living in Britain, too, because cause you can tell them that they suck, but, but you have to be in the sucking, too. Yeah, you, you can't you appear above them. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise you get that attitude, but hey, that's for us to decide if we yeah, suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, Whereas from, if you say that you suck, too, they're like, oh, hey, cool, we're all on the same team. Yeah. We're all shit. <laughs> let's, let's have an amazing time in this closed corridors and drink beer and talk about how much life sucks and laugh and make life better, you know. I have a question for you for someone who has lived in Canada, uh, Britain, and the States. And uh, just curious um, about kitchen parties. Is this right? Is this, as we suspect in the Maritimes, a very much maritime thing? Or is it kind of everywhere? Well, I think, okay. And by kitchen parties, I just mean people just gather in the kitchen. Yeah. Whether there's music or food or a party I, or booze, that's just like it happened today in, in Reese's office. Everyone was just yeah. eating donuts and drinking coffee in the kitchen of the office. And I was turning around like, oh, this is this is what we do in the Maritimes. Yeah, you know? I think so. I think the acknowledgement is ahead of the curve in the Maritimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, People I think, do it without I think making it a thing. So much because we know the party will end up in the kitchen. <laughs> so, we, so we actually call it a kitchen party because I will say, yes, around the world, every party does end up in the kitchen. Because, oh, because everybody ends up going there for their last drink or for right. their next drink or going to the fridge. And then they end up not migrating back to where they're from. They end up in the conversation in the kitchen yeah. so the party winds up in the kitchen but only here does it seem we've just named it that because <laughs> <laughs> because we know that's where the fuck we're going anyway so we're having a kitchen party we're cutting out the middleman we're not uh, like, I don't give a shit about the rest of the rooms in the house we, well, we know where the finish line is everybody meet me in the kitchen <laughs> time for a kitchen party so yeah no, nowhere else names it the kitchen party but I will say Ahead of the curve. Yeah, <laughs> but I will say, yeah, in many parties in Britain, we've wound up in the kitchen, and we do end up going. The party always ends in the kitchen. That's which is very different. Which is the, the, it's not the yeah. kitchen party; yeah. it's where it ended. Yeah, up. and I'm always the one standing, going, "Oh, you guys should come to Nova Scotia. We call it the kitchen party because <laughs> we know where we're going." <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you're heading to the bar, you don't call it the street party before you get to the bar. It's exactly you know, yeah, yeah. the moving, the exactly. moving party the moving to the bar. To the bar. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Yeah. We tend to get our priorities right when we're naming shit. <laughs> so uh, we we tend to go on tangents on the show, and this this episode is is uh, no exception. But these tangents have been fantastic. Um, Reese mentioned earlier on that you wanted to talk to 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 JJ about working on the Jim Jeffrey show. Is that right? Is that oh, what yeah. you yes, wanted? Yeah, yeah, Did you yeah. have any specific questions i just wanted I was, to 
I was going to be just going until you introduced me asking a question. Right, okay, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> I have to have some relevance, I'm sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you for laying the groundwork for my question. And now it's structure. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. You just introduced structure. We were just, we were just talking shit. We're already in the kitchen, man. You just invited us to the living room. <laughs> now we're going to all I sit down. one job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, the uh, with... How did you find, like, the process of writing gags, like, watching the news, writing gags, on such a fast turnaround? Because even, like, we do a politics show, but we, we talk we about... We talk about... Yeah, but, we talk, <laughs> but we'll talk about something that happened 200 years ago. So we, we, yeah. well, we did some election coverage, and we had a much more immediate, urgent... Um, process of recording stuff that was happening and then talking about it. And I found that exhausting. We were both ill. We haven't done an episode for like two weeks. So what was I that? loved it though. I thought it was hilarious. I was fun. just tired. I got three kids. I didn't get much sleep. But how did you find... Curious. <laughs> 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 we just doing a selfie. Uh, I, 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 as a stand-up comic... Like where maybe you've honed a show or like a, a you know a five minute so, actor. Uh, okay, I know. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where your question is going. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I should have. Yeah, yeah, I'm st- yeah I, I know exactly where you're going. <laughs> I don't know why. I kept I was like, you like, ask the question. Uh, it was fun. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I was like, how, how long can we let him? How, how, how many, how, how how many how ways can I ask the same ways question? Can he try to flesh this out? He should have acted confused. It was asked for like elaboration. In all honesty, it was. So when you say joke writer, what do you like? Do you mean what do you can you what? <laughs> I will. I will say first start. It was an absolute dream come true because, so it's it's amazing. It's amazing to go in and write and have your jokes wind up on TV uh, within the week, cool. and and also have a team. Like you get a researcher, you know, and you can go, hey, get me uh, what 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 you know, whatever you've got on on this guy, you know, kind of thing. Oh, they deliver it there, and yeah, yeah, we had a re- I had a researcher. What, what? So, give me an example. Like, so, for example, I don't know why this has popped into mind, but I was writing about uh, t- like transgender athletes and stuff. Okay. So, if I'm writing about transgender athletes and I don't want to say something that's just presumptive and jumping to conclusions, and I want some stats, I had a researcher and I can go, "Can you give me the history and let me know who the first transgender athlete is and when they started, when the Olympics started testing for hormone levels and stuff like that?" And boom, it winds up so that I'm not writing a joke. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, so that I'm not. Just writing out of ignorance going they don't even test for hormone level or whatever it's like right. saying so, so <laughs> you get so you get that kind are there of also fuel. in that regards are there fact checkers on the show as well well yeah 100 percent because that happens in the read-through doesn't it so we're mm. all sitting there and we yeah, do yeah. initial read-through of the script that we have for the show if there's a there's seven of us right in a head writer so eight of us writing and if we're sitting there and we see something come across that maybe has some bias or something that that somebody didn't know then we have to call it up so it's up to us there's a lot of wow. wall there's a lot of hurdles <laughs> to get over before you get it done like i remember one time i think my my head writer corrected me to he wanted to say that uh, if women were allowed to play uh, basketball they would be in the nba by now and i had to be like no 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 they're, they're allowed to try out but this the the men are stronger we just have to admit that there's you know so so in a sense we fact checked ourselves you know oh, okay. because there's nothing illegal yeah. about women trying out for sports and stuff like that and I have, so, I have a question that I've been wanting to ask you about being in a writer's room that I now realize you can't answer, like, because it's your job and people yes. might be listening. Uh, so I went to the, the, the CFC, the Canadian Film uh, Center. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's in Toronto. It's a, a film initiative sort of school place thing. And they taught us about writer's rooms. And I kind of got this impression that, like, oh, it's it's pure hell on earth. It's oh, just right. a nonstop like hell machine of stress and hormones and tears and like was your sh- lecturer burned uh, by the industry by any chance <laughs> <laughs> and i even i even asked well you g- you do get factions you do get divided especially if you're going to tackle political issues and like like two of the issues that i just mentioned like mm. you know and uh transgender and sports and stuff they get very heated and people have uh, varying degrees of 
But is it, is, know, it, is it like a gonna... factory where you're just churning out jokes and there's no appreciation, there's no fun? No, I think, like... <clears throat> I think the way around it is to have a head writer. We had a very good head writer. Jason Reese is his name. He came over from The Daily Show and and, uh, and also wrote for Sam B's uh, show as well. And he was our head writer. So it's up to him. So we can, so the seven of us as separate writers, we can carry our little biases and our own little senses of humor um, in our own writing. Okay. But we have to give it to our head writer. And then it's up to him to go through all of our so if, say we want a seven minute segment um, and usually we would divide in half so four of us are writing the seven minute segment we do our own version it okay. would usually be about 10 minutes which already has too much waffle on it hmm. you know so so four of us have written 10 minutes we give it to the head writer it's up to him to then make that script so he would take oh, what cool. he likes of what <laughs> we wrote oh wow um and make it into the script and then so there's enough checkpoints that that you know that you get that you can't get away with too much and if you yeah. disagree with each other it's up to your head writer to kind of juggle that measurements and then we have that discussion in the room and it can get heated because if somebody you know has a difference of opinion or you know so and so said something in front of the senate <clears throat> You know, and somebody might see a good interpretation of that. Somebody might nice. see the bad, but it's up to the head writer to, to to flesh that out. And I chose that version. And then not until Jim Jeffries comes into the room hmm. for the reading, do you have to gauge him and go, OK, Jim, I felt the other way, too, because then maybe because Jim, you know, so there's so many checkpoints even before you get to the Jim Jeffries presentation part. You know, and then you have to gauge how he feels right. about it. And I, so just, I just realized that, like, I, I asked you to publicly declare whether or not you liked your job. <laughs> right. Yes. And, like, after the show is over, you're going to, like, find me around the corner, slip me a piece of paper that says I'm being held against my will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah to go back to that question. Yeah, that's it was a it's a dream come true. And so you need two things to happen. I mean, you need a job to exist, which is amazing. So it's great to be in that writer's room and do all that. And that said, too, if my head writer didn't pick things, I got in that habit of learning how to turn it into my own stand-up anyway so when oh. so when some of my favorite jokes and you can do that legally yes cool. yeah when some of my jokes would wind up on the cutting room floor and uh not so, uh, so it's not like they not gonna... own all the jokes whether they use them or not no yeah yeah well, no, that's they gotta cool. use them if they that's use very them, cool Okay. Yeah, I hope that's the real I mean, deal. Because if, if Comedy <laughs> Central is listening right now, no, and going, I mean, like, Comedy it's, Central might be listening going right now. Going, <laughs> so it's brilliant to go in to uh, the writers' room and write and have those kind of challenges and know that you have to get in order to get a joke. Like a lot of your soldiers die right. on the hill. If you you can go ahead and enter the writers' room on, um, you get your can topic you do on metaphor. You get, <laughs> you get your topic on Wednesday. You submit everything on on uh, Thursday. But if you got seventeen soldiers that you're like these the this could be the show this can be the show and then your head writer gets to pick things apart and by monday morning we recorded on tuesdays by monday morning only three of your soldiers have survived you right. just you learn you learn to accept that <clears throat> but i want to say the second most brilliant thing is to write for somebody like jim jeffries because he is a treat so he Aww. he turns whatever you want into comedy gold and that doesn't happen a lot so because i know for a fact in the industry there's a lot of people that you will write for that are a lot harder you know, oh, but, okay. but Jim Jeffries has funny bones in his tongue. You know, he's just, he's, he's good <laughs> to go. Gotta be awkward. You can, uh, he's, a, he's a funny fucker. And, uh, and so that's a little bit of lightning in a bottle when you, when, that's you, very cool. when you're writing for somebody as skilled as has, him. Has, have you ever made a joke that Jim has then made funnier? Yes. Yes. So I was going to, cause that happens. So, so when I have my 70, you want more metaphors? Yeah. <laughs> so when, when I, when I have my, often, often when I have my 17 soldiers who I'm, who I'm very proud That's of. the same metaphor, man. No, 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 no. I'm, I win. So I got my 17, but I'll have, I have 13 morons who, who didn't really make the cut. But I kind of just, you know, it's it's uh, it's 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 progressive. It's uh, I'm trying to be uh, I'm trying to be inclusive. So I actually I actually hand the in thirty. Division, yeah, yeah, the moron division. So I'll have my moron division. So I got my seventeen gold star soldiers, and then I got my thirteen morons. So I honestly do hand in to my head writer. Like here's thirty. Here's here's thirty. Our whole battalion is ready to go. <laughs> I'm really glad that you like this metaphor more than it. <laughs> so here's the complete battalion, and then sometimes the morons will make it through. 
like, how did the morons make the cut? What kind of... This, this dude is... <laughs> that joke is five foot two with a peg leg and should <laughs> should not see battle in any case. And yet he's made the cut. And then I'll see J- Jim look at it and then it'll come out of Jim's mouth. And I'm like, oh, right. Oh, tur- turns out he's a soldier of fortune. All right. So, oh, so yeah. So you're, sometimes. You under- oh, underestimated. Yeah, that, is that, yeah, that is that skill. That Marshall, what are you doing on the <laughs> You, I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to pass you in the first place. <laughs> the, thing, the thing I really like about Jim's persona oh. is that... Um, oh, that was funny. He's got, like, this super laid-back yeah. a- Australian persona. He almost like... It's almost like he... You, it, not to the point where you want to challenge him, but he's kind of laid-back, and, and, and his ability to ask questions and point out very challenging things with, like, interviewees and things. Yeah. I really like that energy that he's got when he's, like... like for instance, the Jordan Peterson interview. Yeah, and Jordan Peterson. I wrote Peterson, on that one, which yeah. was which is amazing. That amazing. was really hard. That was a very hard, oh, controversial I, interview that we couldn't really, make really tough. Jim and I both just talk about that interview because that I, was very hard because we tried to be diplomatic. Um, I wrote the you know when Jim holds up the air horn to the girl. The yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I have not so seen we, this or nor from you. Know, you okay. well, our but audience anyway, should check this out. Talk, talk about well, it. We I'm tried to like, go after both sides, and and uh, and, and in the end, we actually got a a pleasant conversation on Jordan. There was none of this asshole like the the controversial figure kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. It didn't happen. We had a good back and forth, I got, which I is really he, weird. At one, at one point, he admitted he was wrong. <laughs> yes, which so so Jim catches him out. So we managed to catch. But do admitting, you remember what it was? But admitting you're wrong, it was about. Yes, I I 100 do. Um, I, was, I get the feeling that Jordan Peterson is a a civil person and it's just like he's f- met yes. with a lot of discourse like well, so a lot that's, so right? that's like, part of the difficulty because because in the even in the moment when he admits that he's wrong that's just a con that's two two people having a conversation yeah. back and forth and we thought the admittance of being wrong this divided our writers room a lot actually uh the admittance of being wrong i thought showed humanity and respect and composure as, absolutely as some, and then some other of us even in our own, thought we got him we got him <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and so and so then all of a sudden we got people going no no we didn't get him we're showing that he's human being yeah they, he's listen. reasonable and yeah. so and then you, and then the takeaway from that just divides everybody in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. america and there and the, there's the we got him people and then there's the no no it shows that he he has a back and forth conversation yeah. and goes so you see the person you want to see so if you wanted to see a great villain then you're like we got him and if you wanted to be impressed with oh right this is a back and forth for yeah. learning stuff the reason i've actually talked about this on our show a, a bunch about politicians just just to bring politics into the mix bizarrely on our show for a minute uh it's the fact that like if politicians were to admit fault or or admit that perhaps they're wrong it would show a vulnerability which yeah. is what attaches people to you right like yeah. you 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 like somebody else due to their vulnerability you the fact that the human side politicians try to come across as these infallible heroes these infallible gods that can never be wrong despite just throwing tomes of logic at them right No, i'm still not wrong but if you were a politician who who like oh shit you know what that's a really good point like if you were if you went to a a politician's debate and like wow that's actually a really good point you just made i'm gonna have to think about that i'm gonna steal your idea yeah yeah right yeah (laughs) (laughs) but that would blow people's minds if a politician admitted like i could be wrong with that i'm gonna think about that that's a really good point you made people would be gobsmacked yeah gobsmacked yeah and so and yeah. that's become really hard in this era because because people love being able to take a little clip out of something too right and yeah, go, Look, yeah. This. and then they paint a story about it and uh, and go this is what and you're just like i no, hate, no, no. I hate when you, they do that by the way just as it like taking little clips you know yeah. like if if jordan peterson uh was being interviewed and and he like he he would said something like yeah and the, the media would would love to hear me say something like i love nazis and then be on my way and then someone would just clip that one little bit yeah. of, of him going, I love Nazis. And that would be the only thing. Yes. Be I'm going to clip you. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and that's the that's the big problem. And I mean, we were having lunch earlier, and we were talking about rage scrolling and things like that, and yeah. people just getting fed what they want now on yeah. their social yeah. media stream, and and just scrolling through, and that's what they get. They get these little snippets, yeah. and instead of using you know some deductive reasoning or a, a little bit of you know just. Yeah. Just wanting to maybe know a bit more about maybe the full clip or something yeah They'll take it and run with it and that's part of the poison that we have in the world right now is, so uh, but this was a huge tangent that i brought us out of i'm sorry if you wanted to go oh, back I was, to the i, I want to bring, i want to bring up the air horn because the air horn moment was brilliant so jesse what happens is mm -hmm. um they also interview uh, a, a woman who uh, protests jordan peterson's speeches by play by by with air horns. You, or, Jim Jeffries interviewed the woman who protests. Yeah. So both Jordan getting, Peterson. Yeah, yes. we did. And, we interviewed all sides. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of okay. The, of the so, issue. So yeah. uh, and then Jim Jeffries asks a question to her, um, and uh, the point is that she's not doesn't want to listen and no, have no. a back and forth conversation. Exactly. Yes. Mm. And 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 uh, asks a question about free speech, and then blasts an air horn at her face, and she tries to answer. <laughs> 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 Oh, you're gonna enjoy this clip when you discover it. You should you should watch it rather than me describe it to you. <laughs> but the hard thing is, yeah, not to, but, uh. but doing these things is crazy because we didn't earn any points for diplomacy. No, either. no, no, no. Either the people who hate uh, Jordan Peterson felt that we did a pro Jordan Peterson piece, <laughs> and the people who love Jordan Peterson feel that we did a hate Jordan Peterson piece, yeah, yeah. and we're like, oh my god, we we did the most like the most consciously showing <laughs> showing both sides and uh. being letting everybody have their points given and and yet yeah, sometimes you just fail in this yeah, yeah, yeah. in this modern era of like yeah. i want to find a way to be angry at you no matter what yeah. right yeah. i've been told to be angry with you i'm going to be angry with you so uh, the other clip i wanted to bring up as well was the uh when you were covering the legalization debate uh with in all, ireland uh, oh no um okay. in um sorry the the cannabis legalization and, right. and he went to amsterdam to show what it's like in a uh, a country where weed is legal and yeah. everything, so many other things are legal there, yeah. in comparison, um, by going on a drive, going on a drive <laughs> around with some police officers in Amsterdam. <laughs> And literally, oh yeah, and literally and a lot of statistics and stuff. <laughs> well, our showrunner, who's named uh, Scott Zabilski, uh, it was an amazing guy. So he was our showrunner, and he's uh, he was also a police officer. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, that's an amazing transition, which is great. And also because Jim's older brother is a How police he... officer, so Jim is very close to the policing world, and and that's always been an important issue to Jim is is gun control, right? Yeah. So Jim's always been very passionate about that and so that's so so that's a lot of their brainchild together this our showrunner and jim going we need to do because they've done it around the world now the gun they did road with police officers <clears throat> in georgia they were police yeah, officers yeah. in australia and they'll put up statistics while they're doing it and uh there's a good twist to the police officers in australia i won't do a spoiler alert but i did just give you the answer about <laughs> a minute and a half ago um when jim is riding along with a police officer <laughs> okay um in australia and and yeah, so they they I, he was on a horse. I, I love him on a horse. The back he was on the back of the the police okay, horse. Do, do you guys want to? It's his brother. Come <laughs> on, it's his brother. I, I, it's I, up being his brother. <laughs> were you being sarcastic again? <laughs> uh, I didn't move my eyebrows. No, so. no, no. He's like, oh, wipe your eyes. So. Yeah. yeah. But there's uh, the moment in the one clip where he makes two dutch police officers wait outside while he goes and smokes weed in a cafe yeah yeah and he's like while he's doing he's like you know i'm there's, there's people in prison because of this and here in in in, yeah. in, in amsterdam they're waiting for me to finish my <laughs> finish my joint <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, yeah it's crazy but anyway yeah, i just like the, the, the way you illustrate those issues by doing stuff like that was great yeah um, that's um that's very yeah i thought you initially talked there's we did the one on abortion rights in ireland oh, which no, was I, I crazy because they were repealing uh the right to, to you know the right to have an abortion in ireland which successfully i would like to think we can well we did contribute a great deal we did a two-part piece on that which helped the movement in ireland oh, wow. uh, and they repealed the eighth amendment which was uh you know so you you can get an abortion in ireland now which weirdly enough in texas currently they seem to be going in the opposite direction that's so not that weird it's, it's uh, texas it's not yeah, that weird i guess, I guess so, but yeah <laughs> if, so, anything, um, if anything weird is going to happen in the states <laughs> it's going to be in texas <laughs> did was there anyone... i have friends in texas <laughs> i like texas but texas is a weird place man <laughs> yeah yeah every state every state in america has a, has a weird <laughs> Hang up. Hey man, I've only been there for five years, but I am blown away by something all the time. Every every time I 
Hold up, hold up. It's time for a mid-roll announcement. That's right. You get to be the lucky, lucky so-and-so of an ad. And, and do you know the best part? You get to listen to this ad for free. <laughs> we won't even charge you. Free ads all the time. <laughs> Was there anything on that show that like got you scared when you like? Because obviously, like the political the political climate is hot, and when you're doing this kind of cutting edge <laughs> well, stuff, is there anything that backfired or terrified you when you made it? Um, th- no, not not uh, entirely. I mean, we get we of course ruffled some feathers, and we've had some complaints, and we have, you know, and it is that social media era yeah. too, where if somebody wants to be, uh, they want to complain about a segment we, we did, they'll cut out bits Just from it and they'll they paint yeah. it the way they want it so there are a couple of those figures out there that do dickish things but i'll tell you this is there's a funny side to this we did do a uh a circumcision piece um and we sent uh, choose your words carefully Jim, man this is the, like, come on yeah. <laughs> it was unedited uh, it was it was we didn't, it was fully uncut uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but uh uh it was uh, yeah i don't basically we riled the feathers of the uh of the anti circumcision people in the world which are they're called intactivists no fucking way this, this is a real thing yes they're called intactivists and like as i said so it's actually kind of a cool name like as far as it sounds like <laughs> so, so, it sounds, i mean it doesn't seem that complex <laughs> i get it uh, it, sound, it sounds like don't a, take a knife to my junk it, it, sounds, like, it does sounds like a slower. character from doctor who it's the- activist. <laughs> Doctor and activist. Doctor yeah. and activist. <laughs> if you didn't know it was related to circumcision, you would think yeah. it's just about remaining part of a country yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh my god! If but, I go to a bar and I start meeting women and they ask me what I do, I'm going to say I'm an activist. No, nope, just leave nope, it You don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you have got to trust me. So uh, when you discover, so what I want to say was we we uh, so we did. This is less scary, but it's it's I don't know worrisome or uh, whatever. It's and you know what? It's not a big deal. But uh, so I tour with Jim as well. So I'm, I opened for him uh, okay. in America. And Which is amazing. The Intactivist uh, got so offended by our piece on the Jim Jeffrey show. So basically, Jim is circumcised. We're not afraid to say we're, we're I'm North American. I'm circumcised. Um, and his angle is that it's not a big deal. And I know this is a discussion that everybody's having in the modern era, whether or not to circumcise their kids. Jim landed on the circumcision side, in his opinion, which is fine. And activists disagree, you know, and they protest things with like bloody marks on their pants, you know, like big bloody like. <laughs> oh come on! The, and so I opened opening for Jim on the road, but they started following us on the road <sighs> at the gigs, and we started. They're the biggest protest that we had. We've had intactivists you can't, protesting tell me something with this. I just take photos <laughs> with them. I take photos like ten feet from them, but they're all standing there in like their that. white pants with the bloody crotches and stuff, and yelling, "You know, you guys are monsters!" You so stop. Oh my God, man! The, the opportunity it it feels like I would have joined them. I would have kind of like gone in like. I'm a monster. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I, no, I, I, I already wear on their shoulders and take photos with them. You no, know, do do it with your white pants on backwards, <laughs> <laughs> with a bloody hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be terrible when they find you out. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Like, just can you, can you, like, how do you, the quickest way to shut down a protester is just to agree with them. You know, <laughs> just, yeah. it's important. Like, also, I, you know, it, it doesn't, I love this, and I don't have an example ready to go for the intactivists. Intactivists? Uh, intactivists. Intactivists, yeah. right? But when someone is, um, has, has taken their logic to a crazy place, right? Yeah. Um, like a lot, so like as an example, um, some Christian it's fundamentalists. It's crazy, the crazy behavior too. I, yes, I don't that's, care that's, about your opinion, or no, I don't yeah. care about your opinion, but yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind you having it. But it's when you start yeah, thinking yeah. that the rest oh, of the world yeah, needs yeah, to exactly, bend, right? the behavior, no will. the exactly. You can't when you when you are faced with crazy, right? Yeah. 
you can't logic them. You cannot defeat or diffuse crazy with logic. You can't do it. People have been trying for centuries. It can't be done. It's fun to watch. It's fun to try to argue, but it doesn't actually get anything done. If you want to, if you want to defeat crazy, and this is actually, it's really fun. You got to out crazy them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be crazier than them, right? Agree with them and then take it further. Right? <laughs> well, and, and have them apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry we brought him with us. Exactly. <laughs> this, I had, I had inches at it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so in agree with you. I, I tell you what, I've gone around to clinics all around the world. I've collected up everybody else's <laughs> remainder of their knobs. I've added, I now have, I now have a nine inch surgically enhanced cock. Can I be on your team? Please it attack like this. <laughs> it, just, it just looks like a dead, a dead elephant. Like, anyway, uh, we are we're officially running out we're running out of time so jj on that note it's quarter, it's quarter to three okay, i want to give you plenty minutes. of time to talk Holy about your fuck. projects and your tour and your podcast <laughs> and your Skin twitch and everything out. else <laughs> yeah well um <laughs> so, just I'm going or, or you can just laugh for the next just, 10 minutes. Just watch Jesse like, laugh. <laughs> He's not with us. <laughs> Jesse, wait till you see. Wait till you. I like that you didn't even know this is real. Now everybody, now your listeners are going to look up in tactivist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy shit! Of all the things in the world to be passionate about, and now, and now, picture me and Jim. Picture me and Jim. We'll be at the show uh, later this. Uh, like, so I'm joining. I'm rejoining the Jim Jeffries tour. Yeah. When I get back to. to the states and yeah that's we every now and then we're just we're in the dressing room just getting ready to go on stage and the show manager will come back going there's some protesters out front but they don't seem to be angry at the things you talk about in your show they just seem to be angry that you have a circumcised cock but yeah that uh, seems to be what has pissed off people the most they're most riled up by uh, <laughs> by us being circumcised oh, so, oh, oh my god i would be so happy to have fucking intactivists follow us around race are you kidding me oh my god oh my god like there are so many different protesters that i could be afraid of but those guys at the end like why don't you go have a drink with them after the show you know, you know what i mean well, they're like, not friendly they're uh, well, no, exactly. I, the way, <laughs> Jesse, again, Jesse, <laughs> these are people protesting the skin on dicks yeah. okay they can't no, be that's, dangerous that's, that's people to me that sounds terrifying they are literally the people protesting skin on dicks no, they're, they're, why would you go for but just to clarify, guys, they're protesting the lack of skin oh, yeah, on yeah, dicks. Right, it's yeah, not, the, the it's, removal it's of skin on dicks that they want. That they're all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more skin on dicks. Yeah, yeah. All to, to, to remain. They feel that you're a criminal and a child abuser. Yeah, yeah. If you're, which, which that being said, no, let's just whatever you decide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, good, good for you. Uh, but. Uh. <laughs> so you, you're on tour in the US now. so I'll be on I'll be joining uh, Jim's tour uh, yeah and which is going to be lots of fun we haven't been touring for the whole pandemic so it'll be nice to yeah, snap yeah. out of that and you've got um, a po- you've got a podcast that you're doing and yeah I personally like in the yeah, time yourself. Uh, yeah that's right okay well yeah I mean yeah look me up hold uh, yourself out there uh, you go <laughs> look, look, look me up unless, unless you're an intactivist and uh <laughs> I uh, don't know where to find it. You know, in the t- time of the pandemic, I yeah I've started to do Twitch, which is crazy for a, for a, you know a veteran comedian to join to, the world of Twitch. What and do you do on Twitch? So I play I do play games because okay. I but I also do the so you can just do just chatting. Yep. which I think is always funny, and I fun. think my viewers like that. But then I also I wasn't a gamer or anything, but I think it's that fear of like what the hell do I talk to people about four days a week. You know, for the for an hour and a half, two hours. And I thought playing a game and making fun of the characters. I like to play a narrative game and make fun of whatever bullshit kind of character <laughs> story arc is oh. happening on on screen. So that's kind of fun as well. Real quick um, shout out to my buddy Matthew Guvea uh, in Toronto, uh, who I just found out today plays a character uh, in Far Cry Six. 
Oh, oh, amazing. How freaking cool yeah, is that? That's going to be great. I would love to have a character in a video game. Right? Like, cool is that? Hey, I mean, sorry, I just there's wanted to shout more out money that's... in that than movies these days. Yeah, so you could right? have a character in a video game. You're, you're probably getting paid more than I'm if... I'm totally planning on buying, buying that game. I was planning on it anyway, and I just, I can't wait to kind of, like, pick him out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's bad to well, And I can yeah. just shoot him in the face, you know, or whatever. Like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even since I've, because I, since I've been in Canada now for a couple weeks, I've just been brought just doing just live just chatting like in real life for IRL <laughs> as the kids say <laughs> uh, but, it, but it's fun and I actually can't see it going away I see it as part yeah, yeah. of the makeup to being a comedian I think in the Twitch, future yeah I think people yeah. really love having a little bit more personal con you gone are the days of just being a man who wanders out of the woods <laughs> stands on the stage in a random city delivers your jokes and observations <laughs> and then disappears yeah. back into the woods. I did want That's to. That's how my father did it. Yeah, yeah. I did, yeah, I did, I we did. never saw him for weeks at a time. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> just, <there. laughs> just in the woods somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, he just disappeared in the woods. I mean, I, I do have that romantic piece of my comedian soul that wishes I could do that. But I think that, that those those times are gone now. Thank God. Because if you, don't, if you don't find a way, if you don't find a way to nurture your audience outside of that, you are wandering uh, out of the woods to nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just coming out of the woods going, I am here. And there's just, there's just one dude with his dog and three intactivists standing here going, I was, I've been waiting for you to arrive. I want to talk to you about something. All right, but before you do, What's your penis look like? <laughs> we so, want to know to be angry at you or not. We don't know yet. You just put your pants down for a second. That's all we need. Three yeah, seconds. Yeah, so it's been fun. It's been a learning curve, like I was saying. You guys, too. Your... I, I only started doing these things this year, too. I didn't start at the start of the pandemic. At the start of the pandemic, I think we were still dealing with, like, the Jim Jeffries show and, mm. uh, and uh, what are we going to do next and stuff. And now that the great reboot of society is coming, I will say... I st- great reboot. <laughs> it does. It feels like a great it reboot. Kind of does, yeah. We're going, we're going back on stage we're doing stand-up again finally we're not any stand-up that i did during the pandemic was in a parking lot to cars you know i don't know if you guys know <laughs> and they beat, that, but and they beat and, so. well no there's a sound ordinance in los angeles and they're not allowed to honk their horns so, just so what they do is just wipe those good they would hand them <laughs> you're, you're very close really <laughs> you're you're very, very close. <clears throat> what they do is they hand you clackers. Oh, wow. And if they like what you're saying, they would do down the window and clack for you. Oh, that's kind of cool. Clack out Actually. The, oh, it's not cool. <laughs> oh, trust me. Trust me. And you haven't, you haven't been insulted until you've had a car walk out on you. In the <laughs> of, you have to, you have, to you have to stand there on stage while a car does a 19-point turn going, fuck you, Whitehead. I never liked your stand-up. And then they're forward, reverse, forward. I'm getting out of this parking lot eventually so that's that's the only way they can walk out on you i i long for these days in the passenger side clacking out the window put that down yeah Yeah. i long for the days of like being back on stage now and if somebody doesn't like the show they can just walk silently out the back of the room and not have to listen anymore oh my god so that would be good and uh yeah uh, but i'm jj white snake on uh twitch and we got a i got a podcast jj white snake on so twitch.tv slash jj white snake actually yeah 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 a lot of my social media is jj white snake because i made a decision a drunken decision about 10 years ago that i was gonna be jj white snake okay. I, well, I thought, I thought, well my space came and went <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. i thought all of these titles are fleeting <laughs> so who gives a shit what you call yourself and so i call myself jj white snake uh it turns out that it ends up sticking uh turns out those, those things work so but if you look me up on any social media i try to have all the links there because everybody's got their particular thing i've got a podcast with francisco ram is a comedy store act we're at the com- we we recorded the comedy store in los angeles they just took us on um so it's out there there's all kinds of avenues um but yeah so but that's what i'm trying to do right now is grow all these social media things since i'm quite new to the social media game mm. i've just been a live comedian and a tv writer for so long but i'm enjoying like i'm things like twitch and stuff are actually they're yeah. a lot more enjo- fun. Yeah. they're more enjoyable than i thought um because i thought it was quite it's quite intimidating when you're like, do you what do am I going to talk about? Do you do all the on screen like graphics with bits and stuff? And Not yet, but I'm slowly learning. And I have a couple of mods, you know, who have been oh, designing good. That's things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got some, like, every now and then, like, like uh, I have this great mod. Her name is Tweed Pond. Shout out to Tweed Pond. She's designed some J, some baby J's. So she's got a vomiting J and a, and a love struck <laughs> J. And, awesome. and, and then all of a sudden, sometimes when I'm twitching and talking to people, it'll pop. Somebody spins. I don't even know how it works, really. 
<laughs> Somebody spends 500 channel points or some shit, and, uh, and me petting a moose will just pop up on screen, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> So I am in that world now. <laughs> I'm in that world. I'm on the road over for Jim. But yeah, if, you want the, if you want the personal touch, come to my Twitch channel and give me, uh, give me a question, and I will literally be there reading it and, and answer it for you. So, so at the end of our, I, I'm assuming we're, we're getting close to wrapping up. At the end of our episodes, we we do a call to action. We literally call it call to action, where we ask because like when uh, yeah, pretty much like any YouTube or, or podcast or tw- anything, people just bombard your audience with don't forget to like and subscribe and rate and hit the yeah. bell button and it's so much information that everyone's so used to hearing all at once all the time that it becomes white noise so right. we do a thing where we ask our audience to just do one thing once and sometimes that one thing is treat yourself go make a sandwich you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? so for you uh, jj what would you give our audience today as a call to action and it maybe it could be go to twitch it could be whatever you want oh well shit man i'm here at home this is where i grew up in Nova Scotia, I really enjoyed it. So I will say, call your mom. Aww. Call your oh, fucking God. mom. <laughs> say hello to your family, and then get back to your life. Oh, I like so that. Talk to your parents. Oh, I've really enjoyed being home, man. It's been a pleasure, and I've loved meeting you guys. Yeah, I, you're I, blessed, I just, man. I just love it, and I love that you guys have added to the tapestry of being home. There's part of me that, well, while I've been home, that I'm like, I should just move home. I love being home. I love being home. <laughs> and then it takes people like members of my family to go, no, look, you're in LA. Just keep doing what you're doing. Like, oh, Shouldn't I just come home? Like, so yeah. Halifax so, has been described yeah. to me as a velvet pit. Okay, it's right. so smooth and velvet, and it's so nice, and you don't notice that you're slowly sinking and sinking and sinking. Yeah. You can't climb out once you're at the bottom. It's I yeah, could have lived yeah. anywhere in Canada, and I chose Halifax. I don't know. I well like it. done. Well I done. Right. I mean, it's been absolutely because I've been home. I usually come home at Christmas time to do some shows and stuff, and I know it's been a couple of years since I've been home now. But this is my first catching this gorgeous weather and I know it's so warm. Cool. So I, yes, I have a, it is, yeah. It is a it's a hell of a velvet pit. I, <laughs> I, I have a love hate relationship with this city. I truly do. I I love Halifax. It is my home. It is where I grew up. Um, I have a lot of friends here. I have family here. But it is a velvet pit. And and my issue with this city is several things for one thing it's just beautiful the people are wonderful the people are kind and friendly and gre- and gregarious but at the same time we have this weird 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 thing with the arts okay we celebrate and i mean celebrate mediocrity okay <laughs> if someone says i'm gonna be a stand-up comedian i'm gonna go do this thing as an example yeah. Okay. Um, and then their and then friends, or even not even friends, just anyone goes and sees this person who is new in the stand-up comedian world and they, they did a show. They don't celebrate you because you did a good job. They don't clap and celebrate because you did the job. They celebrate because oh. Yeah. No, no, no. I was going to say, I have extra time. My manager needs 10 minutes. So. Okay, that's fine. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. So no, no. You're good. You're good. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, everybody. That's, yeah, sorry. I hadn't hired out because I had a phone. I, yeah, yeah. I just got this. Los Angeles is just waking up right now. And this is when I this is when I get those calls of like, we're not on time. I like it when they're not on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like it when <laughs> I'm not yeah, on time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry, I, was, I was looking at the clock going, I hope. I hope Jesse's story finishes. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, you're good. I just do I not like it. So no, yeah, so sorry to cut you off. Yeah, no, <laughs> we're, um, we're totally good. I like it. I like it when they when they do it. That's yeah, totally sorry, fine. Go, so okay, so just to. I mean, the joke is going to be ruined now. But it's, <laughs> um, we can edit it out. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, no, so in Halifax, there's this weird, weird thing where we celebrate med- mediocrity. If you do a stand-up routine and you're new to it, you're like, hey, guys, I'm going to do stand-up. And I'm not talking your friends come to see you because your friends are going to love you no matter what. I mean strangers in Halifax, okay, will come to see you do stand-up and they will clap and they will applause and they will come and they'll talk to you after the show and they will tell you what a great job you did not because you did a great job but because you chose to do literally anything at all right they celebrate the fact that people do choose to do anything at all is celebrated in this city and it's sad because we i think that's nice yeah i think i think it's nice too i'm having having trouble painting this is a bad (laughs) 
Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, so people get creative and ambitious and try to do something for themselves. And, and then okay. they're supported. Uh, then they're supported by their peers. I will argue. I'll, I'll give you a chance to argue this because uh, you make a good point. Okay. Okay. That is nice at first. Yes, it is. See nice what's to happening me. right now? This is a back and forth discussion. <laughs> it's, a, it's a participation medal. Okay, is no matter what you do. Oh, little Timmy, he, he did something. Here's a medal. It's a participation medal, which yes makes you feel good for doing something, aiming off your lazy ass, but it never challenges you to do better ever. So, you know, you, oh my essentially... God, Johnny wrote a book. Not Johnny wrote a good book, or Johnny wrote a great book. Johnny wrote a book. Right. End of story. Clap, clap, clap. Move on to the next yes. thing. So, so essentially, Johnny you he's are... great, even yeah. if he's shit. Yeah, <laughs> you, you prefer a system of like cultural Darwinism. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I see where you're going, though. You're going with the whole like everybody gets yeah, a medal. Yeah, yeah. Everybody this, gets a medal in right, the city. Okay, yeah. I understand. Well, that's yeah. I think that's a whole cultural. That's everywhere in the world too. That's not just in Halifax, but uh, oh, yeah, maybe maybe I could be wrong. Maybe it's everywhere. Every, but, like yeah. I've noticed, I've noticed it in this city. Like it, like right. kind of hard. It sticks out. Yeah, but right? it's good. It's a good place to get started and build your but confidence. You, and you, you don't can, know how it's you not. Know, it's not until you go to other cultures that you realize your medal is a piece of shit. We have different standards for our medals here. Uh, so go stand over there by the intactivist. You're, uh, you're just as relevant. Oh, God. oh my throat. Yeah, so so everyone go go and call your, your mother. That's the oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that, that was because I really enjoyed my family time. It's been really nice to be home. So you've got, you don't realize how I mean, not that I'm in a well, I am. I am in a self centered, uh, ambitious uh, kind of uh, career, I guess, or whatever. But uh, and I love it. I love I love what I do and everything. And I have my family and my people. See, in, what would have been LA, way funnier is but, if you pulled it away. From and, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, I was reaching for a glass but of water. Yeah, but and being home it towards and, me. and seeing everybody has made me, you know, and I can't wait. I'm because they're all asking too, like, you're home so close to Christmas. Will you come home again? I'm like, yeah, I'll do my best to come home. Like, you know, provided I can get through all these hurdles. There's a lot of hurdles with, sorry, we do have 10 minutes if you guys want it. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But gonna... there's a lot of hurdles. Like, getting here was a hell of a thing. Like, you have to get the 70, you have to get the test, the P- PCR oh, yeah, yeah, test yeah, within yeah, 72 right. hours <laughs> in order to travel. I was almost angry when I landed in Vancouver at first from LA and didn't get pulled up when they didn't like pull me aside yeah, 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 yeah. to check all my paperwork they just kind of glanced at it and I was like come on really really don't you want to try harder oh yeah I'd be a little me? upset too honestly because I want to see them doing a good job right like you know I don't want them just kind of well, wave that, me through that happens in Halifax too not to throw Halifax under the bus but they no, do they do. do warn you that they're gonna really like, yeah, yeah. go through all your paperwork they did not I mean I did land in Halifax at six in the morning but uh, they do in the restaurants yeah Every they restaurant do, you go they, to, they want they, your, your ID and your your test, yeah. uh, your, your proof of vaccine. They're pretty... Yeah, yeah. Well, I was, I was actually very good. Job I, went, I went and met uh, JJ and, and Reese today at a at a, a bar outside in the patio, and I was all excited. To, like this is the first time I've, I was ever going to give my my passport, my vaccine passport, to to a waitress or, or a staff member. And I was like, I got my phone out. I was like, here it is. She's like, oh great, where's your ID? I'm like, fuck. I, <laughs> I had to confirm your identity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, cool. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, the bus. <laughs> really the bus. Yeah. We don't know who this guy yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> so you got, you're here for another five days. What are you planning on doing? Another five days. Uh, so I'm doing a spot at Yuck Yucks tomorrow night. Oh, I'm, fuck me. Actually, well, yeah. So, well, I was, but it's... I, Can so, you get me in? I was... Uh, I know, it's not... I'm not headlining, but... Because um, uh, I was headlining Yuck Yucks last week. But I have been doing a Nova Scotia-specific bit. So I asked Yuck Yucks if they would let me come in and record it tomorrow. Because I'm going to try to uh, pitch it around. Maybe uh, it just seems so... No, I'm actually, actually I can tell you guys it Please, if you want. Yeah. Um, it's a true story I uh, yeah I got tons of time now okay. I, uh, uh, true story my phone bill this is fun to talk about this on the air actually too because I want to work it out uh, but uh, I my phone bill went up 700 bucks over Jesus. the pandemic what the fuck yeah per month that's how I felt as well it just yeah all of a sudden 700 dollars per well, month well luckily I caught it on the month that it went up 
And Sean, I was how like, what's that happening for a month? Well, well, exactly. That's what I'm about to tell you okay. about. Then. You <laughs> strap the right in and we're about to. <laughs> I, love, is, I just, let, is, just let him tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how I felt, too, man. Maybe you should be on stage with this. You add so much. It would be great. If I want to work this out uh, on a comedy stage, if I can go. Just, 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 okay. Yeah, it's, 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 every, I got a true story. True story. Quick. <laughs> I'm not making this up and I wish I was because then I wouldn't have to tell the story, but I have had, I laugh so hard and I laugh at so many things. I had a stand up comedian find me after his show to come and shake my hand because <laughs> I just, I laughed so much during his set. Right. Yeah. That it's like, dude, thank you for just being here. Just, it made the show seem funnier. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We're yeah. no, I'm just bursting out laughing and everything. So that was, was embarrassing, but yeah, I'll come to your show and laugh at you. <laughs> that would be very funny. Just to have you like maybe sit on a stage or sit on a chair. Sit on the stage. On the, yeah. sit on the stage. <laughs> and then I go, so I was down at the gym the other day. And you're like, what? No, you were at the gym. Where was it? What location? Okay, I'll tell you in a second. So it was down, I was at the gym in East Hollywood. East Hollywood? So is that like in Hollywood? Yes, yes, that's in Hollywood. It's like, eventually we'll get to the... <laughs> hope, hope make one gag so, last 30 minutes. Yeah, I, yeah. I will 100% do this job. Yeah, here, I, here I am wanting to record this Nova Scotia story just for posterity. At Yuck Yucks. That, so that's the scoop. I was telling it on stage. I, so I was headlining Yuck oh Yucks last week. So we don't have a time machine. Can't go back to that thing. But I asked them to come in. I'm going to record it for posterity because I don't see telling this story very much in LA. And they might be confused in LA, which you'll understand once I tell you this. Okay. My phone bill goes up by 700 bucks. Pause for Jesse to go, What? I was on the way to What's going on? Here? I stopped myself. <laughs> now, I have, so living in America, I do have, uh, I have that deal where you can call Canada and Mexico for, for, for no additional charge. I've signed up for that. But I went down to T Mobile. In, uh, on Hollywood Boulevard and uh, to tell them like why is my phone bill gone up 700 bucks this is honest to God's truth uh, and what I was saying on stage last week was that it's evidence that America is you know 39th in education and number one in confidence in the world <laughs> so this young 18 year old is there and uh, and looks at my bill and I was like why has it gone up 700 bucks and the kid goes well well sir well Mr. Whitehead you have uh, free phone calls to Mexico and Canada and I said yes I do I do and it's gone up 700 bucks and they went, well, you've been calling Nova Scotia. And I, and then, this is true. And I went, yes, yes, I have free phone calls to Mexico and Canada. Mexico is not even important at this point. But the Canada thing, very important. And yet the confidence in this young American working at T-Mobile as he looked at me and went, well, Nova Scotia is not in Canada. Oh, my God. And I had to go, no, it's it's very much in Canada, I assure you. And he wasn't bending. He wouldn't. He wouldn't go ask for anybody else. He's like, no, Nova Scotia. And I'm getting an educational, uh, you oh know, lesson God. from this kid who's going, no, Nova Scotia is not in Canada. Like he thought it was something out of Harry Potter or some <laughs> shit. You know, Nadia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, I'm just like, it's not a dream of ours <laughs> to one day be part of Canada. I'm like, dude, this is, we're very much Canadian. He went and got two other T-Mobile employees, both also, I would say, between the ages of 18 and 21. And with all the confidence in the world, all three of them stood in front of me and tried to explain to me that Nova Scotia is not part of Canada. Oh my God. And they're like, see the area code here is 902, Mr. Whitehead. That's not a, that's not a Canadian area code. I'm like, no, that's the Nova Scotia area code. I was begging and pleading with them. This is amazing. It was some crazy shit. Did you tell them that shit. you were from Nova Scotia? I did. I explained, <laughs> I am from Nova Scotia. I guarantee you it's Nova Scotia. Not having it. They had to go in the back room and get one of their bosses. Unbelievable. Right? And one of them stayed with me. And there was a map of Canada on the wall. Oh, my right? God. Or, sorry, not a map of Canada, but a map. A world map. Just, yeah. And I didn't notice, like, see the way you have your honeycomb kind of thing on the, but I didn't notice that the, that the far side of the map ended at the corner and the map stopped at Maine. So Nova Scotia, so when I confidently, when they came out, I went, look, and, it, and I just, I gestured, I went to gesture and Nova Scotia was not on the map either. <laughs> so so I'm is it just the age of New Brunswick? Yeah, it was just the age of New Brunswick and Maine. And I'm, so now I'm like, got to explain to these kids that you don't fall off the end of the earth if you try to go all the way to the east coast of Canada. And oh I'm just fucking God. arguing with them. This that is Nova amazing. Yes. Amazing. 
So I really enjoyed explaining that to uh, to the, to a hometown audience uh, last weekend when I when I was headlining. So tomorrow how did night. It end? So well, that's so the well, a resolution. Well, I have my well, my <laughs> twist is more an empathetic twist to that. It's nice to share this. Well, basically, I just say that it's nice to be able to share this story with the Halifax crowd because here in Halifax, we are the only ones who know that we don't exist. Right. <laughs> so that, that is basically the eventual conclusion that I come to with the story. Did you manage so, to convince them of Nova Scotia's existence they, in Canada? I did eventually. So the person, the, their boss person, came out and I and started listening to me and I. I was like, I don't know what they think Nova Scotia is, but it is very much Eastern Canada. And they eventually agreed with me, you know, that, okay. But and is actually, that where the $700 bill came from? Yeah, it was from calling my parents in Nova Scotia. It was and from so, calling home from L.A. And it, so, it couldn't have been like a personal. It had to be like in the system somewhere. Exactly. Yes. The so, someone re Nova, Nova, Nova Scotia. Totally. Totally. What? Totally. It was just jacking up my phone bill, even though I had free phone calls to Canada. And I'm trying to explain them. Please put us on the map. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please, we exist. Just a knock through the Starbucks Truly next door the just to finish the map. Truly the weirdest That's unbelievable. I have ever been in my, in my just, life. So. ten fucking provinces, man. It's yeah. not that hard to memorize. Okay, especially just the, the number alone. <laughs> yes, ten. There's ten. There's ten. <laughs> yeah, r- r- ridiculous. Oh so, my god! Yeah, so my next five days in town, I'm gonna like, you know some more ninth in education, number one in confidence. I like that a yeah. lot. <laughs> very true about yeah. America, man. Very, very true. And uh, yeah, and I live amongst them. So <laughs> by choice. Yeah. Yeah, man. Again, you're gonna uh, slip me that paper later on. It's like, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, call to action. Call your mother and and call your mother and find JJ White Snake on all of the yeah. Find major me platforms. on the, yeah. Find me on twitch or whatever your preference is right but i am i'm leaning heavily into twitch in this pandemic in these pandemic times i switch on i currently do mondays tuesdays thursdays and fridays okay what and times? who knows when we hit the road again with the jim jeffries tour it might be less fridays but uh i do uh three o'clock mondays thursdays 11 o'clock this is from la though 11 o'clock oh, uh, tuesdays and like fridays morning here yeah, it would right. be uh or no well it's not uh it would be 11 11 right yeah yeah just to track four hours so uh <laughs> but yeah it's out there i'm reachable but i feel that that's my future medium i would like to do that okay. and uh, but i will never stop doing live stand-up of course so right hopefully, no, I love it, man. hopefully that is... will just be the thing that will complement i like it more than instagram and twitter and all those i like yeah, yeah. i like the fact that i go to the computer i turn it on i say hello to everybody i do the thing and then i turn it off i kind of like that and I like that everybody knows they can reach me there. That's what Reese and I have been trying to do. Reese has been uh, introduced me to Instagram Live, but the funny thing he'll he'll do is he'll he'll go on Instagram Live with me f- for like two minutes, just as people are coming on to see a show, and then he'll quit. He'll just <laughs> like hi everyone, uh, <laughs> just, 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 just saying hi. I'm getting in my car. See ya. <laughs> it's usually done with poor planning. I was like, shit, I gotta go. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, well, that's yeah. the hard thing about those things. That's what I didn't like about. Uh, I mean, I'm still available on Instagram and stuff like that, but I don't like that as much because you feel like you just have to be there all the time. Yeah, There's yeah, yeah. Uh, everything's mm. it's on and off, and it's just here I mean, maybe and there. We should, maybe Canadian politics is boring. Should get its own Twitch channel. What yeah. do you think? Yeah. Well, we we did YouTube live that during the election, really well which really, we had like. The whole for like five hours we covered the election results as he right came on. in. We had, a, we had a really good crowd. It was good fun, and we should yeah. maybe Twitch is a better place to do it. Twitch is a better place for live in general. Yeah, I've asked other people like who've done both YouTube and Twitch, and they're like, "Oh yeah, no, Twitch is just better yeah, in yeah, general yeah. for that sort of thing." But for yeah. for doing YouTube live, which is not known for live, we do, we had a fairly healthy audience. Which yeah, was yeah, so, um, before we go. If you could give a singular piece of life advice to our audience yeah. to end on, what would it be? Ooh, well, I mean, we actually, we always ask at the end of our po- travel podcast that we do with the comedy store, we always ask for travel advice. Oh, interesting. Um, but I would, I would say every time you meet somebody, just remember that you do not have, they do not have the same life experience as you. They do not have the same opinion as you, but just be ready. You don't know what they've been through, I guess is what I would say. Good advice. Cause yeah, cause especially in this era, you know, you can get worked up with things that you read on your own social media feed or whatever, and then go barreling into something with somebody who can be going through any, they can be home for a funeral. They can be doing any, they can have any kind of life experience. So just remember other people's experiences are not the same as yours. So tread carefully. I like that. 
Nice. Thanks have, so have much a for... bit of respect. And call your mom. And call your mom. For fuck's sake. For fuck's sake, everybody out there. Call your mom. Says the comedian who's about to fuck off back to LA. And oh, who knows when I'll come home again. It's okay. It's closer than Britain for your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Love your mom. <laughs> Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring!